All right, it's Sunday. It's the 11th of April, 2021. It is another starkly beautiful day here in the desert. It's hot, it's windy, sunny. What's going on here is I've been working on a book, another book. So the idea for the book is I'm gonna combine what I learned living off grid for a few years and also taking a lot of the lessons I learned from camping and adventure travel and a few other ideas like that, to me, they all kind of come together. If you were gonna move off grid like I did, I used a school bus to live in for the first two years. School buses work really good for that. It's really well made, it's really strong, it's a blank canvas, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Also, a lot of people are doing van life, van conversions, and converting school buses or cargo vans into tiny homes or living in them or traveling in them. Okay. Also, if you were going to move off grid, it's pretty common not to build your house right away. So if you had some kind of a motor home or RV trailer or a school bus or a van or something to live in, you'd have something to live in while you built your house. Or maybe you could live on your own property for a couple of years to save up money before you built your house. Okay. So the idea is of combining off-grid living and camping, they all kind of fit together. When you're actually dry camping, I'm not talking about RV parks per se, but if you are dry camping, you could take your motor home, your van, your school bus, go out and go boondocking, go camp on uh, BLM lands, and you would be essentially self-contained and off-grid living at the same time, okay? If you had solar panels or generator, you'd be creating your own power. You uh half of off grid seems like just having your own water you need to either haul water catch water find water okay and then you got to deal with wastewater what do you do with your byproducts you know if you got poops in your bucket or if you got your off grid toilet or if you got you know if you're actually living off grid you could have a septic system or you could have a composting toilet or you know a lot of people say when they're boondocking or dry camping, the thing you run out of most, you run out of fresh water or your wastewater tanks fill up. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm looking to do with the book I'm writing is to kind of just get everybody a starting point of all the things that I've learned in the last few years that maybe if you were just starting, you wouldn't know these things. Okay. Obviously, if you're already living off grid, you know this stuff. So this probably isn't for you, but I think a lot of people watching my videos, this is a subject that you're curious about or you wouldn't be watching the videos, okay? What I realized when I was writing the book is there is a lot of videos that I've already shot that covered some of these subjects. So I'm going to be picking information from the videos. I'm also creating a blog on my website and I'll put the link up here somewhere where I've already got a free preview of what I've got so far on the book. I'm probably going to go through and tweak it a lot, but for right now, this is what I've got. Okay. So you can go there and check it out for free. Um, and if you have any ideas, hit me up in the comments about things I missed or things that you disagree with or whatever. That's cool. Everybody's got their own perspective on this. Okay. So, one, I'm going to go back to some of my old footage and re-edit some clips to make them fit where what I've learned now. You know, there's stuff like, for instance, the first video you're going to see is from footage from 2012 when I did the motorcycle trip. I started, I was living in Canada at the time, in Edmonton, bought a motorcycle, sold my car, moved out of my apartment and hit the road and literally never came home. I ended up moving to Texas on the end of that trip. So I went from um, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, up into the Yukon, Northwest Territories of Canada, crossed into Alaska, uh, went up to Fairbanks and then down to Anchorage, came back down through British Columbia, 
uh, visited my dad in Washington State for a while. We took off on a plane, landed in Belize. I spent the winter down in Belize working on uh, building a roof for an orphanage. I then took a bus through Mexico, uh, crossed at Tijuana into San Diego, Amtrak back up to Washington State, jumped on the motorcycle, did a quick trip that was um, <laughs> Washington, Oregon, Idaho, uh, Nevada, and then backtrack to California, went up Pacific Coast Highway, back to Washington State. Thought my thought about my options for a while, and I was like, well, I really needed to get a job, but I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. But a bunch of little things, he kept saying Texas. So I literally, at the end of my motorcycle trip, I just worked my way down, ended up in Austin, Texas, lived there for a few years. From Austin is when I bought this property out here towards El Paso. Okay. So when you see parts of, <clears throat> for instance, the, the what I call a green dragon, um, and I had to think about why I even called it that, but I, you know, you do an epic adventure, you should some, have some kind of a name. So a green dragon, the motorcycle was green, and that was the year of the dragon. And so that's where that came from. So I came up with a cool logo and made some t-shirts about it and everything. thought I was going to get rich selling t-shirts. I don't know why I thought that was going to sell. I had a few for myself and gave some to my brother and my mom and... You know, I still got some of them somewhere. Anyway, so when I left Canada on the trip, I knew I wasn't planning on coming back. It wasn't like I put my stuff in storage and then was going to come back. Uh, I got rid of a lot of stuff, sold the car, quit my job, jumped on the motorcycle and left and never went back to Canada to live. I went back to visit, but I never went back to live, right? And so everything that I owned that I kept was on the motorcycle. Yeah, you know, so that's, that's commitment, you know. But in the beginning of the first video was me getting the motorcycle ready and testing things. And I'd go off on a little ride around town and then try things out. You know, there was times that I never made it out of the parking lot of the apartment. I was trying to get so much stuff on the motorcycle that I'm like, okay, I'd ride 50 feet and realize that was a bad idea and I'd push the bike back. I was scared to ride it, take everything off, redo it, put it back on again. So that's kind of how that all started. Uh, the motorcycle that I have now is the same model, but not the same exact motorcycle. So the one I have now is a couple years newer than that one, but it's basically the same KLR 650 Kawasaki motorcycle. Uh, pretty good bike, mostly I liked it. Uh, I haven't ride, been riding it lately because it's really worn out, the one that I have now. It was pretty, in pretty rough shape compared to the one that I had the first one. So you'll still see the motorcycle every now and then, but I'm not actually riding it at the moment and it's not currently licensed or insured so it's just sitting there waiting for when i get back to it so if you're curious about that that's why anyway so what i'm looking at is i'm going to do probably a series of five to ten videos over the next month or two uh where i can cherry pick things that i've learned in the last you know well i've been camping my whole life it seemed like but um, looking back you know the motorcycle trip and some of the other adventures i've had two vans i've had a motorhome uh, and then I had the school bus. And so I'm thinking, you know, all of that, I've kind of covered almost every kind of camping that you can do. When I was a kid, we had a Vega. Anybody remembers those? Those were awesome. We had a Vega. My mom, my dad, my brother and I drove from Alberta into Ontario and then came down through the northern states and then came back. So we took the whole summer off, camped in this tent trailer behind the Vega, right? What an awesome trip, you know? And then years later, I was in Ontario again on a job, bought a motorhome, drove it back to Alberta, you know? Unfortunately, I was in a hurry to get back to another job, so I didn't get to enjoy that one very much. But uh, yeah, so I've done, you know, cross country in Motorcycles, Vegas, tent trailers, motorhomes, school bus, had a couple vans. And also I pretty much covered the gambit there. So if any of that's interesting to you, uh, definitely subscribe and pay attention and look for the next videos coming out. And uh, 
Also, keep an eye out because I will be talking more about the book as we go. These videos are going to be embedded on the blog pages that are going to go with the book. So there you go. Right now we've got something like 24 chapters already online. So you can go check that out if you're interested. All right, that's it for now. Let's get on with the show. First one, motorcycle. When you're planning a trip, just take a moment and wonder, do you really need everything? I had loaded the motorcycle so heavy it actually tipped over. It almost landed on me and the dog. That was a sign. So I unpacked, picked the bike back up and went through all the bags again. Honestly, the things I did take, I ended up using most of them. Since the plan was to go up to Alaska and the Yukon and the Northwest Territories and then south, I did feel like I needed to pack for just about everything that might happen. I had spare parts. I was packed for winter, which is good because it actually snowed. I ended up spending the winter in Belize though. Then I moved to Texas at the end of the trip. It's hard to plan for something like that. The rest, well, you'll see how it turns out. It is almost two o'clock, 23 August 2012. This looks remarkably like it did before. It weighs less though.
the bike tipped over this morning. It's uh, 23rd of August 2012. It's now about 8.05 in the morning. I've been up since 5. I've been out here since before 6. I was loading. The bike tipped over and almost got me. I couldn't pick it up when it was loaded. I actually had to unload all of that and some of that and about all of that. Well, since January, so about the last eight months getting ready for this trip, buying gear, reading blogs, coming up with my own plan, designing the bike, building all the accessories, sewing bags, uh, buying tents and camping gear, and buying cameras, and then the last month, well, I moved out of my apartment a while ago, so I sold my car, and so I'm, I'm really basically, I've burnt my bridges, I'm going on this trip. I spent so much time and so much money getting everything ready. I should have left a few days ago, so I'm right on the edge of jumping off. And I realized that I can't take half of the stuff that I thought I was going to take. I can't really compare what I'm doing to the blogs that I read. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up or not. There's a whole bunch of coyotes just to the north of us that are just yipping like crazy, so it's behind the camera. Earlier this morning, I had a flight of geese fly over. I think they're still on practice runs.
here we've got chain lube stuff in the two cans this is where the aux batteries go uh, power adapter for the laptop these are the battery cables I just showed um, there's a little air compressor in here four spare park spark plugs some spare oil filters headlamp and part of the water purification rig and then up here this is my waterproof box laptop goes on one side now, I wanted to take this this is being kind of big plan, as soon as I can get on the road, went up towards Slave Lake, then angling over towards Dawson Creek, picking up the Alaska Highway, running north for a little bit. But instead of going straight up to Anchorage, I'm going to turn north, stay in Yukon, run all the way up and then cross back into Northwest Territories. Check that out, it's got a lot more gravel road there too. But that way I can say I was in Alberta, BC, Yukon, and Northwest Territories. And, uh, and then also uh, go into Alaska and then pick up Dead Horse and Anchorage and Fairbanks. Take a trip out of it. There you go, just like that. 300 watt inverter, normal. But on the other end, I put one of my Anderson power connectors on. If you can see that or not, but there's another connector right under the seat. Let me just plug it in. Now we got house power. Click. And just like that, we got power. Chain and sprockets. Magic heat, my mom found it, Canadian tire. Six hours of heat. Quite often I just eat my chili cold out of the can, but once in a while it's nice to get some heat in there. Put some chili cans in here. As we use them, that'll lighten things up again. Get some 
tuna cans. Take one can of chicken soup. And right down here, this is sewed to the bag. It comes up, Velcros through the same D-ring as what I got going there. And that's that. We'll do the same on the other side. I'm going to shut the camera off now and let it start charging. Okay, it's rolling. Since it's looking like it's probably about to rain, I'm going to go ahead and pack this up. And uh, I'll just get pictures later. Uh, basically, all we got left now is the sleeping bag, which is that big bag. It's going to come up about here. Right now, all my weight's down really low. That'll help. It's 12.20 now. I should be on the road soon. Just in time for it to start raining. Yay. It is almost 2 o'clock. 23 August 2012. This looks remarkably like it did before. It weighs less though. I illuminated two backpacks. Most of the actual weight is right down the center line. Um, Eliminated one sleeping bag. Uh, actually added cans of food, so down where the tools are, there's uh, food in there now. Uh, two of the three pouches on this side. Uh, the other side is full of tools still. But I did cut a lot of tools. And ironically, I added one camera back. I got the little video camera now. Not the one on the handlebars, but another one. So, yay, okay. So, quick break. Clean up the mass, put on the gear. I don't know if I ever talked about the gear or not, but this piece down here minus the canteen. That's body armor. Wear that under the jacket. And then the pants, and the jacket, and the helmet, and the gloves. All that goes on there. And this is me looking kind of tired, but uh, relieved. Bike is uh, a lot more stable, better balanced, still a little bit top heavy, but it's getting better. And once I burn through some of that food, we'll be in good shape.